Welcome. Hello. Good to see hello. you. You have to hello, unmute hello. yourself. Welcome, welcome. You have to unmute yourself and then say hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. 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 Hey, Kevin. Kevin and Jeanette. Oh, sorry. Hello. Hello, Jeanette. Hello. And Kevin. Hi, John. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> Hello, Michelle. Hi. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> Hello, Judy. <laughs> so, guys, as you get on, please unmute yourself first, say hi, and then you can only mute yourself. But you must say hello. <laughs> so, who's, who's next to say hello? Hello. <laughs> hey, Shirley. Oh, hi, Shirley. <laughs> I'm going to play to Jeanette with All right. I see everyone. I say enter, rename, but I can't do that. Hello, who else is going to say hello to us? <laughs> I put the video. Okay. Hello, Christoph. Judy, have you said hello yet? Yeah, but... Let's see. Ah. Hello, Chris. Hello, everybody. So good to see you guys Judy. with us tonight. Um, oh, bikies. Hello, Dorsal. Excited to have you with us. Um, so, like, yeah, just Paul, I see Paul just joined us. If you can, just say hello. Um, you just unmute yourself and say hello. <laughs> hello. Hi. <laughs> hello. <laughs> All right. And there comes oh, no, Zuko is in the waiting room. Marion, uh, you must say hello. hello. Hi, nice to meet Hello. you. Hello. What's your nice to meet you? It's Haddon. Haddon, yes. Yes, nice to meet you, Haddon. <laughs> hey, welcome. Thank welcome, you. Welcome, welcome. Woohoo! It's so good to see all your faces. Um, do me a big favor as you get on. Oh, Marion, you first must say hello. <laughs> Hi, evening, everybody. <laughs> 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 Hi, Marion. Okay. Um, what I would like you guys to do is just write down, uh, tell us at the bottom where you're from, and then I'm going to start to call out the different places where we're from. Uh, it's always nice to know uh, where everybody's from. Uh, so it's far, so far from African countries with Malawi, Cameroon, Liberia. Mm. So let's see who else is going to be on our call tonight. Um, if you just joined us quickly, unmute yourself and say hi. I see Amanda. You want to say hi? Hi. hi. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a few minutes late. My no, you're absolutely fine. We're so glad to have you with us. Yay. <laughs> it's going to be a good, good night. Good night. Okay, let's see who else is with us. Uh, okay, there's Chrislyn that's signing up. So, guys, what about Nozuko? Yeah, she's, she's, say on I am. she's on her way. So, guys, just quickly let us know. Okay, let's read. Let me see. <gasps> we have somebody from Pemba, Mozambique. Oh my gosh, I am going to be talking with you guys about uh, some of my trips to Mozambique. Um, um, and we're going to get Michelle. It's uh, hopefully Michelle's going to be with us this year to share a little bit more about what you're doing today. Welcome, Paul. Yes, Paul. And Hello. Good Hi. evening, guys. Hey, hey Paul. How are you guys doing? Grace and peace unto everyone. Uh, so good to hear your voice. Is your wife with you? Is it just you tonight? Yes, she is. Hello. 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 Welcome. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much. So good to have you with us. And then we we so uh, glad to be with yes. And then there's Haddon, which we already said hello to from Worcester. My goodness, Haddon. Um, yeah, I've been through Worcester many times. One of my favorite places. Um, I, I love to go and stop there for coffee on my way to Swellen Dam because my parents live in Swellen Dam. So oh. <laughs> good to have somebody from Worcester. And then of course we've got the Heidelberg crowd. Yay! <laughs> and if you guys want to greet us, um, Hi. Hi. <laughs> we're all just getting ourselves together. Oh, <laughs> awesome. 
There's such a fire coming from Heidelberg. I'm telling you guys, like from Amen. Man, like from Malawi, we are all fire carriers. And then surely from Gordon's Bay. <laughs> that is so cool. So those of you that just joined us, please let us know where you are from. We would love to um, make some connections with you just to see uh, which part of the country or, or even Africa you're from. Um, and then Kevin is from Gordon's Bay also. Yay! <laughs> Welcome, Kevin. Um, one of my favorite places to go for a swim. <laughs> Ooh, this is so good. Okay, so let's get going with our program tonight. Well, it's actually not a program. It's never a program because we are gathering in the presence of God. And we are so excited to just be with you all. Uh, for those of you that are wondering what's going to happen now, Deborah is going to, um, uh, um, uh, what is the word, mute all of you. So um, that is so, just so that we can do some things now uh, on, on the call. So uh, don't, don't, don't be offended about that. Just, it's, it's just Deborah doing it. <laughs> You're wondering who's messing who with your Zoom call. <laughs> um, so... Let me put us up on view that you guys can just see a little bit of a gallery. There are some of us. Uh, not everybody's on here. So I'm just going to count to three and then we all wave. Okay, are you guys ready? One, two, three. Woo! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Woo! So good to have your faces. Okay, I'm going to put us on speaker mode. Not that you probably will see my face. I don't know with what happened to me. So before we are, I'm going to give over to Jerome. Let's just um, remind ourselves again that the Word of God says that, that God lives inside of us and is around us. So you are totally surrounded by the presence of God, by the glory of God. And to make it more exciting, He is also inside of you. His presence is living inside of you. So I want you to close your eyes. So everybody just close your eyes. <clears throat> now the word Yahweh um, uh, um, in, in Greek, uh, in Greek, in Hebrew is yod Hey vav Hey, And the Hey talks about the breath of God, the breath. And through that breath, we were created. Now we are going to breathe in. <laughs> How awesome is this? We're going to breathe in the breath of God. And then you just breathe it out. That is how awesome it is that you are surrounded. So even our breath is full of the glory of God. How awesome is that? So just close your eyes and just breathe in. Just go like this and just breathe in. <clears throat> just breathe in and knowing that you're breathing in the breath of God. And just, just breathe it out. And just become aware of his presence around you. Maybe it's peace. Maybe you're just feeling suddenly such joy. I mean, there's different ways sometimes we experience God. Just become still and quiet inside of you and just become aware of the awesomeness of his presence. Father, we invite you to come and touch us. We invite you to come and be with us. You're anyway with us. So we just want to thank you that you are with us. We want to thank you for your presence that surrounds us, that you are inside of us, that you totally enfold us, that we are never alone. And we just give tonight over to you, Father, and just give, we just give you the honor and we just give you the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Those of you that have just joined us, welcome to the Cape Town School of Supernatural Ministry. Make sure to give us your location, where you are staying. Write it at the bottom. There's a, a thing there that says chat. So open that up and then just type in what uh, country you're from, what city you're from. We would love to know. All right, now I want to give over to Jerome. Um, Jerome, I, I assume you are still with us. <laughs> I can't see your face here. Very much, Esme. Hello. Good evening. Hello, everybody. 
Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, is my thank you for the opportunity to share a song with the group. Um, wow, friends, thank you all for joining. Thank you all for taking the time to be here. And um, I really want to encourage you all to be expectant, be expectant of encountering God, be expectant of encountering the Holy Spirit, uh, because he is not he is not restricted to a venue or to a room or to a, a physical space. You know, God is everywhere. And we can all have the same encounter tonight. Um, I want to read for you a scripture before I get into our song for the evening. Uh, it's in Zechariah 10 verse 6. And this is very closely linked to my personal experience at CSSM. My first year at CSSM was all about identity. It was about who am I? And who does God say I am? And um, a year or two ago, we were out at a ministry event. We were, we were ministering at another church. And as we were in worship, so we are out ministering to someone else. But meantime, the Holy Spirit is ministering to me because I read Zechariah 10 verse 6, which is, And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to place them for I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am the Lord their God, and I will hear them. And I read this, and it was like, wow, God is saying, they shall be as though I had not cast them off. And God was telling me, look, my relationship with you can be as if you had never been separated from me. It can be as if you had never been far from me. And we had never been, you know, enemies. <laughs> and I was just blown away. I remember in the moment thinking, how can it be, man? You know, God, how can it be? Uh, like, because I think in the, in a traditional church set up as Christians, we are very good at conviction. We are very good at convicting ourselves of sin and convicting others of sin. And I was intensely aware of my shortcomings. I was intensely aware of my sins. And God told me his response to that was, you still think, my love is fair. And it just totally blew me away that God can love us in a way that we just could never imagine. Imagine if God could treat you as if he had never cast you off. Imagine if God could treat you as if you had never done any wrong in his eyes, because that is how he sees you. And tonight I would like to sing a song for you. But when I do it, um, we're going to do a little activity. Um, I would like you to please, as we are listening to the music and we are meditating on the lyrics and what the song is about, I would, I would just encourage you and I trust the Holy Spirit to reveal to you one thing that you have disqualified yourself from because of your sin. One thing that you have thought, ah, that's no longer available to me. It's no longer on the table because I've wronged God. And um, because sometimes we disqualify ourselves. And I believe that God is saying tonight, did I say? Did I say? Because you are disqualifying yourself, but did I say? And I just want us to trust God for that, that he will reveal to us one thing that we have disqualified ourselves from or an area where we have stopped dreaming because he says that his love is greater than any sin and his love is greater than any shortcoming. And his grace is greater. Um, I'm going to get into it here. Ismay, I know I said I would try and sort something out with the audio. That did not happen. So I'm going to just try and be as clear as possible on the guitar. Be comfortable. Jesus be the center of it all. Jesus be the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. 
Thank you, Father. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> you know, I'm just really sensing such a deep sense of his presence. And why don't you do something, praise? Why don't you put your hands on your heart? I know it might feel a bit weird because we are online. <laughs> but I want you to put your hands just on your heart. And and just receive the word that Jerome said, that you qualify. Tonight, you qualify for the presence of God. Nothing that you have done, nothing, nothing stands between you and God. And if there's anything 
that you need to just get rid of, you know, then just pray the prayer, ask God for forgiveness, and just get your conscience clean, because there's nothing, there's nothing, and there are certain things that you've done in the past, and those things keep on standing up, but you actually are done with it, and I'm just telling you tonight that God's saying that those things are done, that tonight he's telling you it is done. It is done. You don't have to go back to those things. You don't have to pick up the shame of that. And I just right now, I just speak deliverance over you. I just speak over your life right now that you are set free from those things in the past that keeps on coming up. And I just declare over your life that you are free that you have an open heaven, you live under an open heaven, and nothing you've done in your past can stand between you and the love of God, and tonight that thing is broken off your life in the name of Jesus, in the powerful name of Jesus, and I can just see, I can just literally see, it's like a fountain that you have been put in a fountain, and the water is just flooding through you his presence and that's not the water that washes you clean of sin because you've done that this is the presence of God just coming over you waves after waves after waves in his waterfall amen thank you father for that wow <laughs> it's so good isn't it good to be in the presence of the Lord thank you um Jerome for that um sorry guys that the sound came in and out jerome didn't have anything to, to connect with his computer but it's amazing the moment he started singing i could just feel the presence of god um, just coming over over us so it's wonderful to have you all with us those of you that came a bit late please let us know where you are from it's so fascinating to see the different places that you are are at um let me see if I can, we've got somebody from, well, Marion from Faro. So if you have joined us and you haven't put down yet where you're from, Gailene from Cape Town. Um, let's see who else we've got here that haven't. So please just go ahead and I will make sure to call out the place where you are living. So tonight is our second session for the Cape Town School of Supernatural Ministry. And we just want to welcome you guys. You know, all of you on this call are actually um, breakers in a sense because this online school, this is the first year we are launching the online school. We've actually done online last year with our students, but this year God said to us that he is going to reach Africa through the school. And look, here you are on this call. God is so good. Um, yes, and Lucretia from Ravens Meet. Yay! It's so good that you're with us, Lucretia. I hope I'm saying the name correctly. So um, I, I love testimonies. That's one of the things I just really love. Now, I was wondering if there's anybody on the call that has a testimony of God's goodness. Now, when we share testimonies, we do it very briefly because we don't have a lot of time. And um, uh, yeah, and you just share the, the, the gist of it. So um, if there is anybody um, that has a testimony that you just birds just burning inside of you, um, quickly <laughs> unmute yourself and yes, go for it. <laughs> yes. Hi, hey, that's me, it's Gaylene. It. So, yes. so last week I got exposed to um, COVID-19 and I entered last week's session fearing really bad. And literally 15 to 20 minutes in, I got so hot. I literally boiled and I thought this is unnatural. Um, and literally at the end of 20 minutes, my, um, my temperature came down. And Ismay, I knew that that was an encounter with God when you actually prayed us out. And you said that you were hot to the point of sweating. I then remembered my first 15, 20 minutes. And yeah, and so 
Tuesday, I then took my temperature and my temperature was normal. So I knew instantly that God had healed me in that moment. So yeah, so just praise God to him. And I thought I needed to share it. No, you have. Then Gailene, don't mute yourself yet. So everybody, when we share testimonies, you have to react, okay? So if you go down on your screen, hopefully you can access it. There's a button that says reaction. And then there is different, there's a clap, different things. I want you now to go there and select one of those things. Because um, this is just how we celebrate a testimony. So quickly, everybody, see if you can find the reaction there. Yay, this is so awesome. <laughs> Listen, you are so bold, Kayleen, to share. Now, I want to ask you something. I am sure that on this call, there are other people that might be sick, have flu symptoms. Maybe there are somebody that are actually in isolation with COVID. So, guys, if that is any of you, just raise your hands quickly. If any of you are sick currently, uh, feeling fluish, uh, we are going to ask Kayleen to release over you the same healing that she experienced last week. So... Uh, and you can also, yes, you can also in the chat. Okay, okay, guys, maybe I must explain to you. If you go to participants, um, if you click on participants, you can go to your name and you can actually there, um, uh, oh, actually, no, let me explain that later. Uh, uh, let me explain that later. Okay, Gailene, go for it. Will you pray over everybody? Yes, I don't see in everybody's names, but I'm just going to believe this by faith. Father, I just want to thank you for your goodness. I want to thank you that you are unchanging, that you are the same yesterday, today, forever. I thank you, Lord, for your healing power that is at work in us, that the same, the same spirit who raised Christ from the dead lives in us, Father God. So, Lord, I just want to bring each of these people before you right now, Father God, those who have symptoms, those um, who are ill in hospital, Father God, those who are having problems with breathing, Father God, Father, I just release your healing power over them right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. I speak to their bodies right now, wherever they are, even in this audience, Father God. Lord, I just speak to their bodies right now and I speak to COVID-19 and any other illness and I command it to leave their bodies for, you, they, for that illness has no authority over their bodies in Jesus' name, Father God. And Lord, I thank you for your word that says, that by your stripes we are healed. So I just de declare that over each one. And I thank you, Father God, for your peace that will surpass all understanding that will envelop them. I thank you, Lord, for your healing power that has manifested in their bodies right now, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you that wherever people are, they will by faith give you thanks and glory, Father, for just your healing manifesting in their bodies right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow, what a powerful prayer. Thank you so much. Actually, Galim, when you start praying, I could feel the fire of God all over me. It's like, oh, it's so intense now. So if any of you watching right now um, experience something in your body, maybe the symptoms just lift supernaturally, or maybe you're just experiencing something and like Galim, you know this is not normal, this is something supernatural, please go into the chat room and let us know. Encourage us. Because this is what we do at CCM. We encourage each other to, um, to, uh, uh, to be bold and to be courageous. Okay, so what we will do every night at CCM, we're going to share testimonies. So tonight, we're just going to do one because we have a couple of other things to do. But normally, we spend a good time just sharing testimonies, encouraging each other, and just talking about the goodness of God. We love to brag about God. We love to to show off his goodness. So get a testimony for next week. Um, ask God for a testimony and I will give you opportunity um, to, sh to share. Uh, maybe if we have some time at the end, we can, we can share some more testimonies. So I'm just going to ask um, David. He is on our call team. And there is somebody he wants to just give a word for. This is something else we do at CSM. If you are joining us, you're going to find that this year you're going to receive so many prophetic words, like you've never experienced so much and never uh, received so many prophetic words. And you're going to learn how to prophesy this year. So you're going to be on a call like David at some point this year, and you are actually going to prophesy with somebody. So David, can you um, unmute yourself? Um, yes, yes, of course. 
Let me let me kick off. Uh, let me uh, shall I share a testimony of my um, the impact to me first, or shall I go straight into a word? Go into the word, and then we do the impact. Okay, okay. Um, Jeanette, uh, Jeanette Waring, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, just give me a quick wave. Cool. Um, all right. So take it with. Um, you have to weigh words. It's uh, you know you're a powerful person. You're in a place where you can weigh a word that you know I, I'm trying to hear the voice of the Lord. We don't always get it 100% accurate. So I want to remind you that you're in a place where if you do hear a prophetic word and it doesn't line up with you, um, take it before the Lord and feel free free to flush it if it doesn't. Having said that, let me share what I've got for you. <laughs> um, you carry a lot of authority in particular to influence the um, atmosphere of the place where you're in, be it your, any, any particular atmosphere, be it in a church or a job or in a coffee shop you're just in or with a group of friends. You can pick up on what's going on in the atmosphere far quicker than other people. You're uniquely made that way. Um, it's like you've got extra feelers. You can really feel what's happening in an environment, in an atmosphere far quicker than anyone else. You can and with it, it comes with the knowing. You know that this is why this is a problem or this is something going wrong in the office. And nobody's actually told you about these things, but you're feeling the, under, the undercurrents, the, um, the root cause of issues going on. <clears throat> anyway, I feel like you've been accumulating files. It's like you've got a whole long list of files against, be it against you or against other people, probably a bit of both, but it's a heck of a filing system you're carrying. Um, it's like you're holding on to a chunk of the past through it. The, the problem is um, it no longer exists. It's like the Lord's covered it with the blood of the Lamb and it's gone. It's, you no longer have access to it. The real past is what you have to look at through the lens of the blood of the Lamb. Um, yeah, there's, there's stuff that you have to hand over to him uh, to, to give it a big hug and a big kiss forgive those who are wronged you or the other way around and uh, let it go. Awesome. You must just let us know in the chat if this, if you, if you felt anything about this, if this makes sense to you, we would love to get some feedback. We always love feedback. Um, now before David, so guys, so that those of you obviously don't know David, he, CCSM have a core team of people. And David is one of our core team members. He's actually the dean of our second year school here in Balbo, South Africa. And I'm hoping he will be on the call every now, you know, now and again over the throughout the year. We'll invite him to come. But he's a very precious man. He hears God's voice so clearly. Um, it's just always wonderful to hear um, how he speaks. And um and I have asked David just to share with you guys what CCSM has meant to him. Um, I think it's important for you to know what you will receive from CCSM this year, because you might not have known anybody that have done the school. This is a completely new thing for you. So we want you to know what to expect, because once you know what to expect, then you can ask God for these things. So this is what I'm going to ask David to do. But before David speak, I just want to say hello to Joel from Cameroon. I just see you are here. Hi. And then Andrew from Pumalanga. Hi. Nice to have you with us. Okay. <laughs> Over to you, David. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Very good. <laughs> good evening. Hi, Joel. <laughs> nice to have you with us. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, David, over to you. Okay, okay. Um, yes, let me add just a little bit more to, to that word I was giving you, Jeanette. Um, I feel like in that, that regal, it's, it's like where you're at, he's busy giving you, you've got the wrong clothes on, he's going to give you, you know, that royal robe, um, where it's a level of, it's, it's an upgrade to the way you operate in these things. He's busy uh, taking you through that process um, now. So, yeah, yeah, I suppose I've said. Um, let me share a little bit about what CSSM has meant for me personally. Um, I came into first year of CSSM looking at it going, oh, this is going to be a nice year. I'll be able to relax and sit in the back pew and just absorb. And well, the Lord had other ideas and he kind of dragged me out very quickly and went, well, that was a good plan. We'll just put that over there and I've got a much better idea for you. And 
it was a year of tremendous growth with my identity in particular. <clears throat> he, he was breaking lies off of me, things, you know, I, I didn't walk in totally cold like some of you are, I'm sure. I, I walked in with the knowledge of some of the supernatural, but I was with the, with the attitude it would be amazing. Uh, ironically, the lies that we, we believe hold us tied up on so many levels. For years, I used to believe I couldn't hear the voice of the Lord. And that was broken off of me very, very quickly with, um, with the truth that actually I can hear the voice of the Lord really well. <laughs> um, it's, it's one of those things. So yes, going through first and then second year of CSSM was a tremendous uh, in, in really shifting the change of course of my entire life because of it. Um, I remember for years thinking, if only I could hear the voice of the Lord, imagine what you could do if you had some knowledge on what God wants to say to you. Um, little did I know he was currently talking to me in those years also. <laughs> um, yes, yes. And uh, also opening scripture to me, um, how they opened through the teachings and stuff, uh, brought it back to the word of God. It's nothing outside of the word of God being taught at all. Um, and then, of course, uh, Jesus drew me into having a lifestyle of the supernatural, where I can pray for people, and I've seen healings, and I've, we, the prophetic word has become, as uh, Esme was saying, it's very, very common to get many, many words throughout the course of a year. It's, it's really quite um, a unique environment in that regard. Um, yes, yes. Uh, shall I share a bit more? I can give um, a testimony, if you like, Esme. Um, I think that's fine. We're going to bring you on again to share a testimony. Thanks, David. Uh, awesome welcome. to have you on our call. We so appreciate you, David. Thanks so much. And uh, now I'm going to introduce to you a lovely woman, Nonku. Nonku, if you can unmute yourself. Um, I just love Nonku. She is uh, on my core team for Transformers. It's a tweens and teens ministry. And she's such a woman of God. So, Nonku, I, I assume you are still with us. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> awesome. Um, Can you share with us a little bit about you know, what, CSS, what you learned at, C, at CSSM? Good evening, good evening everyone. Um, when I was praying about what to share today, because there's just so much and like, you know, you can just write a book about like one year and I just done only one year. Uh, 2021 is going to be my second year of CSSM. So it's just really been amazing. But one of the things that God highlighted to me, I really had a big revelation of his love. It was just one of those things that I thought I knew that God loved me and but that I understood it, but I had no idea and like of how actually he loves me. And out of that, like it just brought so much freedom into my life, like deliverance. And and for the very, very first time, I could actually say, I love myself. I love the woman that I am. I love who God made me to be. And which is just one of those things that you don't even think about it because you're not even aware that you're actually like struggling with that. And, and after that, I could just boldly um, approach people and actually love people from a place of knowing that I am loved. And the second thing is that I want to share is that the goodness of God. When we started the school, uh, both my husband and I were doing the school and we didn't have resources, but we knew that what God was calling us to do. And God provided, we had like a sponsorship, which was like really an amazing thing for us because we got to do the school together and out of that place, how God really like transformed our marriage and, and it's just like walking in his identity and both of us knowing who we are in Christ and not trying to be something else and, and, and just really been an amazing journey uh, for us. And lastly um really i learned to be like a child in his presence and um to just let go and 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 allow him to to do what he wants to do and like surrender what i thought i knew surrendering my will and just take it in because it's really a journey that's one of the things i can really say it's a journey and there's so much that you're going
going to be experiencing. So you just need to take it in and, and it's just going to manifest or like come into full tuition as you just keep on stepping. So yeah, that's just been my, my journey thus far. So I'm excited for 2021 to see what God has for me. Thank you. Hey, no go. <laughs> me too. I, I can't wait to see what God has for you this year. It's going to be good. <laughs> So next up um, is Sarah. Sarah's also a core team member. Um, she actually heads up our revival groups. And you are, um, once we have finished uh, applications, you are going to be in a small group. We call it a revival group because it's a group where the fire of God is going to be. And you're going to experience the fire of God. And lots of freedom is going to happen to you. And you're going to have, you're going to be able to connect with people, get to know some people. You're not just going to be on this call anonymous. You are actually going to be known because we don't like you to feel you are on your own. No, no, no. We are here. We are, we're going to become a family spending time with each other. So, Sarah, if you can unmute yourself and just share a little bit about your journey. Greetings online CSSM school class of 2021. I um, do not like talking in public, but I love CSSM and I am um, excited and uh, jealous, if, if I may be, for the um, transformation that you are going to encounter this year. And if, if I was to describe my experience at CSSM, um, I, I was also just dialoguing with the Lord earlier and um, asking him what to share. And I felt him highlight, um, he, he gave me these two words, uh, dynamic relationship. That is what my relationship with him um, transformed into in my year at CSSM, or well, ongoing years, but especially my first year. Um, what is very special about CSSM is you, um, you have one pillar, which is sort of consists of revelatory teaching, um, coupled with activations, coupled with encounters. And if there's one thing that I could just really encourage all of you to do is um, to, to not be afraid to risk. Um, something that is a, a core belief, a core um, ethic, if you will, at CSSM is that uh, not only is trying right, but trying is celebrated. Um, so if you're trying, you, you're doing well. And um, it's, it's funny, but it's in this act of trying and risking that, um, uh, well, for, I know for me, I, I really discovered that I, I hear God um, for myself um, and it, it, through this I think two things happen and the, the one is that you you trust is developed um, the trust and, and belief that you yeah you hear God and that God speaks to you um, um, well I think that was the second thing I think trying was the first thing um, and and through that I, I just sort of like yeah um, my relationship with God became personal. Um, and I, I don't know, I just sort of, I met Jesus in a very personal way. And I don't know, every, my prayer life just became super exciting after that. So I, I'm very excited for each one of your, um, yeah, your journeys this year. Um, I just encourage each of you to press in and be open to the different ways that God might want to speak to you this year. Um, yeah, you just uh, be open and expectant. Um, you never know what might happen. So yeah, I just want to wish you all um, a terrific year. Thank you so much, Sarah. That, that was wonderful. So um, before we go into our teaching for the evening, I am going to ask Deborah. Um, there are some administrative things that we want to share with you guys. Um, so Deborah, can you unmute yourself and just do that, those crucial pieces of information with us? 
Hello everyone. Um, I know most of you have received some sort of letter or email or correspondence from me um, already. So it's so nice to be able to put faces to names that I've, I've typed messages to. Um, just a few administration things. Um, when you come on the call, everyone is being amazing at muting themselves. I really appreciate that. Um, but please also remember to change your name. So for instance, if you come in and it says iPhone 5 or whatever, just change your name. If you're having a problem with that, just send me um, a message in the chat that says, please change my name too. I can always do it, do it from your side. Okay. And if you suddenly find that somebody's muted you or changed your name, it's me, okay? That's what I'm doing behind the scenes. But one of the questions I've had a lot this week is how do we actually apply? So we've had all this information, but it's like those last two steps and people are getting frustrated. So we're just gonna, um, is have I on share screen? Okay, so I'm gonna just share my screen with you. For most of you when, you, when you ask on how to apply, I send you two links. The one link is to the web page, and the other link is its link tree. Okay, both of them will allow you to apply. I'm just going to show you now what you will come up with. Okay, is we know that my screen doesn't always come up. So shout if if we have a hassle um okay i will check is there anything okay, that's happening now okay my laptop sometimes does really strange things so i've just put into google i've put in the website address and i've pressed enter so i'm just going to do it um work it through with you and this is what you'll see okay i just need to make us a little bit smaller so i can um <laughs> scroll up and down um and so when you just scroll down you'll see all this kind of stuff but what you want to do is you want to go to this button here that says apply and you can click on apply and you will see a pair of shoes okay don't freak out don't hit the word application a thousand times it doesn't work you need to scroll down and you will see the information here so to apply for the online school, that's the one you're going to do there. And here is the form. So this is the form you're going to fill in. The first step is actually to pay or deposit. As you can see, here are the steps, number one to six. So you say, okay, how do I pay? Well, here are our banking details down there, okay? You keep scrolling down and you will answer all these questions. Okay, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but this is our heart. We wanna to get to know you. And this is the information we'd love to just know about your history, know about your present and know about your past. We know Jesus knows all of you, but we've just got to ask questions to know that. Um, and then right at the bottom, you will see that you'll have to attach two documents. The one um, is your proof of payment, and that's why we ask that you pay first so that you've got that proof of payment. Otherwise, it's very frustrating to type all of this in and then go, oh, shucks, I have to pay. So do the payment first. No, you have it saved somewhere, and so you can attach it. And the second one is just a picture of you. It can be an ID photo, it can be a passport. It's just so that we can connect a name to a person. Okay, are we good? Everyone give a wave if you're good. Okay. Now, the second link that I would give you, if it's not that one, it would be, you can see up here, it would say www.link.com linktree slash CSSM Africa. Once again, you just go in there and click enter. 
this is what you'll see. This format also will work really nicely on a cell phone. Um, I actually did it on my cell phone early and it works really well. So for this one, you are going to apply for CSSM. Again, you get those pictures of the shoes. And then again, you scroll down and you go apply for the online school. Okay. And then again, you will see there's that application form coming up again. Um, does that help everybody? Okay. Just give, okay, um, we know we're not going to take questions now. What I will do though, is I will put the email address in the chat, chat group. Remember, it's the one you're going to hear a hundred times this year, and that's admin at cssm.com. Okay, that's the one you email, that's the one you keep emailing me, um, and I will answer any question and every question. Okay, I think Ez is writing it in now. Okay. Uh, no, okay. Um, then another thing is, can I tell them about the platform? Yes, go for it. Okay, so very exciting is once I have found your application form and found your deposit on our bank statements, I will upload you to our platform. Okay, then that is the online platform with all these wonderful teachings. It's the teaching we watched last week and um, we never got to the end. So as soon as you uploaded, you can watch the end. I've already uploaded the first seven people and at about five o'clock today, I sent you an email with your login um, um, details. So welcome and well done. It's so glad to have you as a fully fledged student. Um, everyone, as soon as I can find your details and your application fees, I would love to just put you on that platform as well. That platform is such a rich, wealth of knowledge and um yeah you want to be on it as long as possible okay is anything else i think that is it thanks deborah pleasure i can tell you i can tell you guys one thing this school i can't run the school without deborah and the bigger team they are phenomenal so thank you deborah um the oh the one thing i want to say is you know if finances is a problem, please email us and ask for a sponsor. Um, uh, so, you know, we are actively searching for sponsorships and our heart is that nobody must be kept away because of a lack of finances. In fact, if you are gonna do the school and you actually would like to sponsor another student, please do so, just let us know. So I've, I've typed in um, our, our admin email address. It's admin at ccsm.co.za. That is how you can connect with Deborah. She does all the communication. Um, Just want I, to jump, jump in here is, um, yesterday, well, not last week, last week on Wednesday, somebody emailed me and was like, we really need a sponsorship. Here's my application. I've paid my fee. And... The, that was sorry that was on the Monday and on the Tuesday somebody emailed me and said I want to sponsor the student who's the next person who needs a sponsorship on your list so if you need it we put your name on the list and we stand in faith for you God is a God of miracles and that's what we're trusting for amen amen and you know what we have found through the years, and, and I've been doing CSM for quite a number of years, we find that God is always faithful. That if you put your faith out, the finances is going to come in month after month after month. Uh, Marika on the school, um, maybe she can share next week. You know, she at some point uh, didn't have a job last year. Something happened and, and God just kept on providing, you know, so he knows what you need and what you what you desire. I just want to show you guys um, quickly. I'm sharing with you um, the online platform. So our our school year this year is going to be based on two things. You are going to 
be on a Zoom call basically every second week. So we're still meeting next week. And then from then onwards, it's just going to be every second week that we're going to be together on Zoom. So it's going to be the highlight. I'm telling you, it's going to be the highlight of your week when we get together because you're going to experience the powerful presence of God transforming your life. Guaranteed. I'm telling you, it is going to be a, a blowout transformational experience for you. And then the rest of the week or the other week when we don't meet on Zoom, you are going to go to this platform and we're going to send, like Deborah said, you're going to get your login details and everything. And then every single week, you're going to get one to two teachings. Um, some of the teachings is going to be compulsory that you have to watch. Other teachings is just going to be extra teachings that I'm going to load up for you. Um, for example, I'm going to load up a whole bunch of teachings on the Old Testament. That is a, a supplementary course and a course on how to study the Bible. So there's going to be lots of supplementary things like that. So you're going to have lots of things to study and to listen to this year. And this um, website, the BSSM Equip website, um, we are going to give you an app. Or we're going to let you know which app you can download and you can do it on your phone. So most students actually use their phone simply because uh, it uses less data and it's very easy accessible on your phone. So, um, yeah, so this is going to be the two ways in which we are going to connect is on the BSSM Equip platform and then on Zoom. And then, oh, the last thing is we are going to uh, add you all to our Facebook uh, closed group that's only for CSSM. It's going to be uh, you on us here at the online school. It's going to be the campuses in Mowbray and in Belleville. So everybody is going to be on, on that group. And the point of that is just so that we can build connections. So those are the two, um, the two main things that uh, is just important for you to know. And then I have here um, a little slideshow, but I'm not going to go through the whole thing now. Um, there's just three things that is important about this year that I just want you to understand. We love the presence of God. <laughs> And you are going to learn this year to be in his presence. Now, we can't get together to do worship, you know, like we are used to maybe on a Sunday or another day of the week when everybody gets together in the building. So we are going to explore other ways of worshiping God through um, being quiet, being still with him. There are going to be some days that we're going to put on some music and we are going to dance. <laughs> we are going to dance before him, you know, and we are just going to spend time in the transforming, powerful presence of God. So this is very important to us uh, because this is where God comes and he, and he meets with us and he speaks with us. And this is how we honor him. The next big thing is this is a transformational school where you're going to learn about your identity. Um, big thing. You'll, you, in fact, this term, we already start with our first course in identity. Um, and we're going to look at character building. You're going to see some uh, strengthening happening in your character this year. We're going to do uh, healing, not just your, of your body, but also inner healing, deliverance. Um, and you are going to leave this year feeling healed, free, and empowered um, in your calling. That is really what our heart's desire is. And then the last thing, and I think that, see there the two words were put together, is we are going to stretch your faith. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, we are going to risk. First, we are going to spend lots of time on this call practicing different things, practicing how to hear God's voice, practicing how to prophesy, how to pray for the sick, how to evangelize. Um, how to pray, intercede. We're going to practice a whole bunch of things. We call it teach and do, a teach and do culture or a risk culture. Um, in fact, we spell faith, R-I-S-K, risk. <laughs> That's faith. That's how we spell faith. And then we are going to give you opportunity to practice this. You know, um, we, the world needs you. That's God has created you to have an impact in this world. Um, I mean, just like the other day, you know, I, 
I was um, paying for some food and the guy in front of me actually didn't have enough money. He was just short some money. So God said to me, Ismay, I want you to pay his whole bill. So I'm like, oh, Lord, are you, are you sure? <laughs> but you know, when God speaks, I did it. And I paid his bill. And this man was so overcome, not just with gratitude, but I could see that he was just experiencing um, the goodness of God in a way that he has never done before. Nobody's ever done this to him. So it opened up the door for me to have a discussion with him and to see how God just worked in his life. So it's so exciting. Um, and then the other thing is we like for you to be authentic. You know, you mustn't be who you are not. Um, you also have your own pace in how you want to do things. There's a lot of grace. Uh, for you to be who you are so at at any point throughout the year i'm going to expect you to be you don't try to be somebody else don't, don't you don't have to feel any pressure to be a benny Hinn or a whoever you have to be you this year and that is how god is going to use you while you are being you all right then just to let you guys know our main topics for this year is going to be identity intimacy and kingdom culture we're going to start next week on our course uh, about kingdom culture and we'll explain that to you then supernatural living that is that is what we want to make a nat make natural is where the supernatural where things that are beyond the natural where god's power kicks in becomes normal in your life where knowing what god is saying to you where getting ideas from heaven um, walking in power, you know, becomes normal to you, just absolutely normal to you. And we, you know, you're going to become known as the healer in your community because you're going to learn the power of the of God's healing, and you're going to see people getting healed around you. Um, then we're also going to focus on relationships, how to steward your heart and emotions, and this is so important when we want to live a naturally supernatural life. Is we have to be healthy in our hearts and then with coupled with that is going to be inner healing and deliverance and then we are going to study the old testament books in the bible um now it just seems like a few topics but i'm telling you this is actually quite a lot and it's going to take us a whole year just to get through this um, and then there's going to be a lot of supplementary teaching so it's going to be bulky and impressive um, i'll talk to you guys later about our team um, there's just one more thing I want to add is that this year we have five books that we want you to read. Um, we do have some books available. So if you want to purchase some books through us, uh, you must email Deborah and she will give you more information about this. But I suggest you rather go and get these books on Amazon. Um, and uh, these books will supplement everything you're learning this year and it's going to accelerate your learning in ways that are going to be incredible um, if you are struggling to get these books for whatever reason you must also just talk to us in fact can i just share with you something at cssm we love it when you communicate with us <laughs> we love it when you talk to us and tell us what is happening what you're struggling with what you need we just love that we love that so the books are going to be When Heaven Invades Earth by Bill Johnson. In fact, that's the book you can start to read already if you have it. Uh, the first month and a half after we finished off, um, when applications close, we are going to start to read this book immediately. And then we're going to go over into Translating God, which teaches you about the prophetic. Then, oh, Supernatural Ways of Royalty. That is the book on identity. Man, once you've read that book, <laughs> you're... You are a changed person. And then Danny Silk, keep your love on. Wow. Talking about your heart being healed and learning about relationships and how to love one another. That's the book that's going to change your relationships. Even uh, if you're married, it's going to have an incredible impact on your marriage. And then the last one, one of my favorites is The Happy Intercessor. This is the time and the season for intercession. But the time of, of just being depressed when we pray is over. This is the time of coming to, into God's presence with joy and to intercede from heaven so that change can take place. 
so yes and then the last thing is just applications go so so get going with that awesome all right so i hope i have said the most important things to you guys um so how are you guys doing just give me a wave that i can just see how you all are um send me a thumbs up that i can see what's going on yes yes it's so good to, to go through these names and to see you all here we are so excited about this year i can't tell you how excited we are okay so um to let you know that not we are not going to show a video every night we are going to have different speakers from different places um, in south africa in africa we're going to invite some powerful preachers speakers to come and speak we will also hopefully have some international speakers um, so we're going to some nights we're going to have a speaker some nights we'll watch a video um, so there's going to be different things that we're doing but tonight we're going to listen to a message by chris valentin now if you don't know anything about chris valentin well you are going to learn about him <laughs> this year <laughs> he is one of our favorites and um uh yes yeah, so um yeah, what can I, what else can i say about chris valentin he is um, very prophetic and some circles he even call the prophet. Um, and he probably doesn't like to call himself that. Um, but he walks with a lot of revelation and understanding. So go and look up uh, Chris Valentin online and you'll, you'll find some of his teachings and his things. So a lot of the teachings that we're going to show in this school are not available to the public. Only you or those that are signed up for the Supernatural School can actually access them. So it's a wonderful privilege to have access to these teachings from Chris Valentin. And um, yeah, so I'm just now going to give over to Chris Valentin. Oh, so by the way, guys, um, we have teaching notes on the online platform. So if you get lost with making notes, do know that you can go to the platform and you can download all, all the notes uh, from there. All right. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. If you want to graduate from this school. And if you don't fail at least three times. Let me just start again. <laughs> Lord, I just pray that you would bless these people, your people. Lord, I pray that there would be a spirit of revelation on us today. Lord, that you would uncover things that have been hidden in mysteries that have, uh, you know, parables, mysteries. Uh, hidden things, secret things, things that lie beneath the surface, things that aren't easily seen, things that lie below the water. Lord, I pray for a spirit, a revelation to be on us, that we would see what can't be seen so we can do what can't be done. Lord, I pray that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Eyes to see and ears to hear. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you about the process of developing people because you've come into this process and um, I would assume that you came here to be um, developed. How many of you came here to be developed in God? And um, I, want to, I want to talk to you about some of the process and how I think it'll just help you to understand, you know, this culture and and why you're here and I started to talk to you a little earlier about risk and um, there's a few we have a, we don't have a lot of rules but we do have a few rules in, in this culture um, we're not like real rule based but it'd be a lie to say we don't have any of course um, one of the rules we have is that you fail at least three times if you want to graduate from this school and if you don't fail at least three times then you flunk Okay, now I don't mean morally, obviously. Okay, anything that you think I could not, that I, you hope I don't mean, I don't mean. Okay, so whenever you come into class and I'm teaching, some assembly is required. And I know that you can assemble me, my message, to look like something that isn't the Christ. Don't assemble it that way, okay? So if it can be taken like five different ways, take it the way that someone who loves God would mean it. 
You understand that? So whenever I'm speaking, I want you to turn your brain on and think. Okay? So if you went to a church that was really controlling and your pastor, your leaders, they didn't teach you how to think, they taught you what to think, you're going to be very frustrated listening to me. Because I don't spend a lot of time closing all the doors. Now I may do that for you in the beginning, but it isn't typical of the way I teach. Like, I don't typically teach you in a way that I worry about that you could take it three ways. Like, like when I said, you must fail, you must fail three times. I, I, because it's your first day, I said, not morally. But by the second week, I won't close those doors for, doors for you because I figure that you're a Christian and God gave you this and you can probably use it. If you, can't, if you haven't been accustomed to using it, it's going to hurt a lot <laughs> by the second month. You got me? Because I figure that you can think. And I don't think you're here just to learn what to think. I think you're, learn, you're, you're here to learn how to think and have the mind of Christ. So, um, so my, for, for me, and I think for the rest of the team too, I think I speak for all of us, it's like when you come here, you have permission to think. So if you grew up in a house where your parents taught you everything and they taught you how to, you know, they were controlling and they, you know, the bummer of growing up like that is that is your parents teach you what to think. As long as you have the same struggles they had, you'll be all right. But if you run into a, something that they haven't told you how to handle, you're pretty screwed up. So here we want you to have the mind of Christ. So first rule. Permission granted to think. Everybody say, amen. amen. Second rule, you must fail at least three times to graduate. You think I'm kidding, but I really am not. That would mean that you have to take a risk. Now again, because it's the first day, I'll tell you, I don't mean moral failure. I don't mean coming to class late. I don't mean, I'm talking about failing in trying to move with God and you didn't get it right. Like, you gave a prophetic word that was really, like, not good. <laughs> and by the way, <laughs> I hear people say, you know, I've never got a prophecy wrong. Well, there's either two reasons why you haven't got it wrong. The first one would be that you prophesy so genera ger generally that it would fit your dog. <laughs> or the second one is you're in a culture that people don't give you feedback. Or the third one is you don't minister very much. I guess that would be, there was, there's actually three. It came to me in Revelation. Because if you minister enough, you're going to make mistakes. I don't mean you're going to intentionally make mistakes. I mean, that's a heart problem. I mean, you're going to try to get it right, but you're, you're going to make mistakes. And the only people who aren't making mistakes, those people are all in a graveyard. Okay? I know that the church, I mean, there is a lot of the church that, you know, likes, doesn't like stallions. They like geldings, but geldings can't reproduce. So we're not here to sterilize you, okay? We are here to kind of, like, make you productive instead of a wild stallion. <laughs> I'm getting all this spontaneously. I'm sure you could tell. <laughs> but we want you to try. So there's going to be lots of t things that happen here that, you know, the, um, that kind of go along with taking a risk, and that is... Like, when we ask you to prophesy over one another, I'm just giving you an example. There'll be lots of things, but this is one, one thing that you'll do a lot of, is you'll minister to one another. Like, we want you to practice on each other, and when you get that really good, then we'll let you try someone else. Okay? And so, we want you, we'll want you to try on one another. And when we say, like, well, one of the things we'll do is we'll have you stand up and, and give words of knowledge to each other. We don't worry about what that is. We'll teach you all that if you don't know. But a word of knowledge can be judged. Like, it can be, it has to be judgeable. Like, you know, what was their, your mother's maiden name or something? Something judgeable. And if you get it wrong, the person will say, you got it wrong. Because we tell people, turn off your mercy gift while we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all right because a whole bunch of other people get it wrong. So you'll all be, like, bleeding together. You know, it's that whole misery loves company. It's in the Bible somewhere. Anyway, so, but 
one, one thing, like, just to give you an example, when you're on one, one-on-one like that and, and we're having you do whatever it is we're having you do or whatever risk thing, I'm just using this as an example, you can't say, I didn't get anything. You know, I prayed, I didn't get anything. It's like, no, I didn't get anything isn't, isn't, isn't one of your options. You have to try. You know, what if I didn't get anything? Guess. <laughs> you know why I tell you to guess? Because you cannot believe, and again, this is just the example on the prophetic, but it works with lots of things. You cannot, most people in, in God do not realize how prophetic they are. And when they think they're guessing, you cannot believe how many people get a word of knowledge that is so specific right when they thought they guessed. And you know what it does? If they got it wrong, they go, I knew I was getting it wrong. But you know, what changes? You know, it's like the, the leper who, you know, Elijah says, you know, go dip in the water seven times and he's all mad and his servant says, hey, you know, the worst that could happen is you get wet. You know, the worst that could happen is you get it wrong. If God tells you to go pull someone out of a wheelchair and they don't get well, the worst thing that could happen is you got it wrong. But what if you got it right? Well, that's amazing right there. You could just <laughs> walk on. Anyway, um, <laughs> so sometimes, you know, you guess and you're just like, that's amazing. I didn't even realize God, you know, it's like Jacob. God was here. I didn't even know it. So we want you to take a risk. So the one, one of the, one of the, our little, cultural thing says that if we ask you to do something, the only, one of the only rules we have is like, you have to try. You have to try. If you get it wrong, no problem. We're going to celebrate your mistakes because remember, you have to make at least three to graduate. So every time you raise your hand, you go, I got that wrong. We go, all right, two to go. <laughs> Some people could have graduated like in the first week. So you have to take a risk. You have to do what's asked of you. And if you're not willing to do that, it's not a problem. I'll give your money back today. No, I am sincere about that. If you, if you really don't feel like you can do what's asked of you, of course, I'm not being harsh about it. I, hope you want, I just want you to know, like, day one, you know, you just paid. Before we spend any of your money, you can have it all back. So that's a decision you get to make today. But you don't get to make it tomorrow. You understand that if you stay through the day and you didn't get your money back by tonight, it means you made a decision to do what's asked of you and move with the culture. But I will give it all back to you today. <laughs> this magic moment. So, um, we're, we're excited for you to be here. And um, we, you know, we're, we're definitely not experts in anything, but we've learned some things, and we're hoping that we can impart those things to you. Um, so we'll we'll need we'll need you to um, to be willing to take a risk. Um, we know that when you take a risk, Proverbs says, "Where there's no oxen, the manger is clean, but much increase comes with the oxen." Now, most of us are so far removed from the agricultural age. Like, we're two ages from the agricultural age, most of us. So most of us don't have a clue what's in the manger when the oxen's there. This is where you'll have to think. <laughs> what do you think's in the manger when the oxen's there? Where there's no oxen, the manger is clean, but much increase comes with the oxen. What do you think's in the manger when the oxen are there? Some of you are like flowing already, and others of you are like, I am just not sure. <laughs> How many of you have children? You have children. Same thing. <laughs> Listen, you don't have to be too far from the agricultural age. All you have to do is be, get close to the crib. Same thing. Right? So in order to have increase in our lives... We have to have, along with the supernatural ministry, we have to have a pooper scooper ministry. You got it? <laughs> Someone said no. Do not be honest. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So in order to have a supernatural, when you, it, when, you know, how many of you know that Jesus was training 12 guys? It was pretty messy. He kept saying things like, how long do I have to be with you guys? This is like, this is like the God of love himself. 
This is like, you know, <laughs> this is like Holy Spirit possessed man. You know what I'm saying? He, he's not just loving people. He is love. Like he wrote the Bible. And he goes, how long do I have to be with you guys? You're pretty screwed up when the king of patience is out of patience with you. <laughs> and he says things like, how many times have I told you this? You, you know, what I'm getting at is, would everyone agree that he had a little couple problems with his disciples while he's trying to train them? Do you think you'll be any better than that? Well, I hope you don't do the deny thing. I think we've got that pretty well down or sell us for 30 pieces of silver or something like that. That that part's already been done, but the rest is all right. You know, try to cast out demons and you don't get it right, or you get the Mount Transfiguration and you start wanting to build churches for Old Testament prophets and stuff, you know? <laughs> so, so, you know, how many of you know that your body... <laughs> you don't know this part you don't think your body has an ability to take in things that will nourish it and distribute get rid of things that don't work for your body did I say that I was pretty smooth huh should have been here eight years ago it was your body has an ability to get rid of things that don't nourish it if you didn't have that working, and I won't get graphic, but if you didn't have that working, it, it could get ugly. Are you with me? Do you know that your body is, is actually, it's, it, um, how do I say this? Romans 1 says, God's invisible attributes is eternal power and his divine nature are clearly seen in what God made. How many know that God made your body, but your spirit man, your body's like a shadow of your spirit man? There I am, right there. Look at that. I'm kind of fatter there, though. <laughs> My shadow. I was kidding. But anyway, you, you know that your spirit man has the ability to get rid of junk that is not nourishing to your spirit man. Uh, what I'm getting at is, like, don't be overly sensitive. Some people are like, we used to have a time when I first came here, our intercessors used to say, I got slimed. You know, we used to have, we, we pray for people on lines, and there would be somebody who was like demonized or something, and they would say, they're not going to pray for a certain person. Go, they're, get, they're getting slimed. And I'm like, you know what? Jesus touched lepers, and they got well. How many of you know in the Old Testament, when you touch a leper, you got unclean, but in the New Testament, when you touch a leper, they get clean? So the intercessor would say, I don't want to touch that person because they got slimed, which was like, you know, Greek for the demons went home and jumped on me. I'm like, well, that's not a commentary on that person. It's a commentary on you because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And the pre people who need prayer the worst, you don't want to pray for. But my, all I'm getting at is this. Like, you come into school, don't be overly sensitive. You got that? Like, if something goes wrong, all right, get over it. Turn to your neighbor and go, get over it. forgive <laughs> that's good turn to them that's good say to your other neighbor say forgive. forgive get past it tell them get past it <laughs> okay you, I, I'm not saying like don't deal with stuff I'm just saying like don't make it a career opportunity don't make someone's mistake your career opportunity okay so if somebody makes a mistake I understand Maybe they need to be talked to. Our staff makes a mistake. Maybe they need to be talked to. I'm not saying no. I'm just like, hey, you know what? Don't be too sensitive. Okay? I'm teaching you, like, how do I grow? It's like, okay, take a risk. Don't be too sensitive. Do what's asked of you. So how many of you know with this many people and all the stuff you're learning, you're going to get stretched. Stretch is good. <laughs> you guys are processing. I'm giving you time to think because I told you to turn on your brains. And some of you, those wheels haven't turned for a long time. You're like, what is that noise? It's me on thinking. <laughs> this is my brain on Jesus. 
<laughs> this is my brain on religion. <laughs> it's all right if I tease you a little bit, isn't it? Okay, yeah. well, all right, I'm going to anyway. So, you know, you have an ability to get rid of stuff that isn't good. You know, if someone gives you a bad prophetic word, oh, someone gave you a bad prophetic word, this lady said this to me the other day. This is, not, this is a true story. Maybe it was a couple of months ago. She said, someone gave me this prophetic word and it, and it, and it, and it stole seven years of my life. I'm like, get a life, lady. <laughs> Have you ever heard judge prophetic words, you know, 1 Corinthians 14? You know, come on. No one can wreck your life. You can't always help what happens to you, but you can always help what happens in you. I mean, you know, the kingdom within you will become the kingdom around you. You can't always help what happens to you, but you can't always help, but you can always help what happens in you. You're not a product of your environment. You're the product of the way you respond to your environment. So, you know, don't, if someone gives you a bad prophetic word, just do this. Everybody, ready? Go like this. Ready? I'm going to teach you something today. You're learning something, even though it doesn't feel like it. Ready? Flush. Let's try again. Some of you didn't get it very well. <laughs> Probably some of you needed the worst. Ready? Flush. What do you do when someone gives you a bad prophetic word? Flush. What do you do if someone accuses you of something that isn't true? Flush. That's good. That's good. So no one can ruin your life. Only you can ruin your life. So if something goes wrong, you know, you're going to go out in the streets. How many of you know some of those people are not user-friendly? <laughs> I mean, I hope you run into some people who get angry because that would be good training. You know what I mean? Uh, you can't take it personal. Like, they're not mad at you. They're mad at God. And you just happen to be the only person they can yell at, you know? <laughs> you ever order something and the, person, and, the, and the company got it all messed up and the person that you're dealing with is, have nothing to do with the person who screwed it up? Who are you going to talk to? I don't know if you got that. You're just as, you know, his, you're his ambassadors. So if they think God screwed something up, they're talking to you about it. Maybe they're getting mad at you. So, but you know, when you come back from a ministry trip and someone yelled at you because you wanted to pray for them and like, I don't want prayer or whatever, you know, whatever. I mean, things happen. It happens. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm never going to talk to anyone again. I'm never going to minister. Oh, come on, get a life. The devil can't win that easy, can you? Can he? Can he? Can you? You can win. He can't. So you just got to get up and try again. You know what I'm saying? This means yes. This means no. This means I could give a rip. So how are we going to grow? We're going to take risks. We're going to make some mistakes. We're going to flush when things go bad. We're going to know things get, are, get, are supposed to get messy if there's going to be increase. Right? We know that some people are going to have manifestations. Manifestations. Manifestations are, some people are like, sometimes people are going to manifest and it's going to be the devil. It's going to be evil spirit. What are you going to do about that? Mom. Maybe cast it out. Maybe love it out. Maybe truth it out. Sometimes it's going to be the flesh. What are you going to do about that? Well, you really can't cast it out. Sometimes you can cast them out. <laughs> but, you know, when people manifest in the flesh, there's reasons why they manifest. And I think we're all here to change. And sometimes it manifests by the Spirit of God. How many of you know that sometimes all three of those look the same? People that think they can discern whether a manifestation is by the Spirit by looking at the person? Not. Guarantee you. If you think that, the Lord will give you some encounters so you'll figure that out. It might be you. Make sure that you don't make judgments about other people's heart. Okay? Like, you know, I mean, just like when something, when somebody does something in, in publicly or privately, that offends you, make sure you don't judge their heart because you don't know their heart. You don't know why they're doing it. You haven't walked in their shoes. I haven't walked in their shoes, so let's give each other the benefit of the doubt, huh? 
Let's practice this. Okay. Flush. It's good. All right. We're doing good. Okay. I want to talk to you um, a little bit about the process of developing people as far as instruction. Now, um, Jesus said this in Matthew 13, 20. Did you bring a Bible? That's awesome. We're doing good already. I like you guys. Our team keeps coming over to me and going, this is the best class we've ever had. Which isn't good news for the second year. <laughs> no, they blessed you to move beyond them, didn't they? Matthew 13, did I say that? Yeah, Matthew 13, verse 20. And I'm kind of picking up in the middle of a parable here. Jesus was talking about the sower and the seed. You, you, you would all know this parable. The sower and the seed and how the sower went out and sowed the seed. And so we're kind of picking up in the middle where Jesus is explaining some of the uh, metaphors of the, of the different places that the seed fell. And so verse 20 is this one. The one whom the seed was sown in rocky places, this is the man who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Everybody say joy. Yet he has no firm root in himself, but it's only temporary. And when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he falls away. I want to read that last part again. Yet he has no firm root in himself, but it's only temporary. And when affliction or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he falls away. Could I get some water, please? Um... You know, I've read that scripture for a lot of years, and I have experienced that scripture for a lot of years. And what I mean by that is this. Jesus is describing somebody, you, you, you know, he's talking about different levels of soil. You know, he talks about the hard soil here, the rocky soil, the road, the, uh, the uh, weeds. Remember, but the, so, the seed was sown in the weeds. He got choked out. And I've seen people on all those levels, but when Jesus said... That he had no firm root in himself. I always wondered what that meant. Jesus said that there was this time. There's seed. Thank you very much. There is uh, a time in people's lives. Or there are types of people. Or there are seasons in our own lives. And I think all those dimensions are true. In other words, I think this sower and seed thing. I think this is about there are stony people. There are weed filled people. There are, you know, good ground people. You know what I'm getting at. But I also think it represents that this parable can just as easily represent seasons in our life. Have you ever been a good soil people that had rocks in your soil at times? Man, if I have any more water, I'll be able to baptize myself. Thank you very much. Um, but Jesus talked about firm, that these people had no firm root in themselves. And, and he says that the ramification, that like the manifestation of that is that they received the word with joy, but then they fell away. And I can tell you that I have experienced that over and over in my life of mentoring people. I've watched people, I remember the guy I poured the most time into in 19, this would have been uh, 27 years ago, I was mentoring this young man, and I met with him constantly. He became the head of my youth group. I mentored him for many years. I married him and his wife. And, um, and today, they are divorced. He's living with another woman. And he tells his kids that he doesn't believe in God. I, I mean, I have story after story of, uh, like that. You know, I've mentored hundreds and hundreds of people over the years. I've seen students come who are just excited to be here. Which is why we're beginning with this today. You probably figured that out, right? See that bump right there? That's a revelation bump. And that one's got calluses. There ain't no wisdom in the second kick of a mule. <laughs> there are people who get excited about God, but they fall away. And one of the reasons they fall away, Jesus said, is because people don't have any firm root in themselves. You know, this is really interesting because he, Jesus is talking about seed. That seed from the kingdom comes into people's life. And did you notice that the seed from the kingdom comes into people's lives? In other words, they haven't received the kingdom yet, and here comes the seed. And, and it, before they receive the kingdom, they need to have root in themselves before they've met the kingdom. Do you see what I'm getting at? It's like, here they seeds planted in their lives, seeds thrown out into their life, right? 
Jesus, a sower goes out and sows seed in their life. And the seed goes into their life, and Jesus said, well, that guy dies, he falls away from God because he doesn't have root in himself. Like there's something that isn't prepared in his life before he meets God. It's almost like God prepares people before he meets them so that when he meets them, what he releases from heaven can actually grow in their life. Are you following me? And I, I have been bewildered over that, par that part of the parable because I'm like, what does it mean to have root in yourself? And, and I've, I've let's see how I can explain this. I have mentored people with that exact thing. Like some of the most excited people in God when, I, when they've been introduced to, to Jesus. Some of the most excited people that I've mentored in my life are not walking with God today. And that parable has jumped out at me, I'll bet you, a hundred times in the last ten years. And I'm like, Lord, what does it mean to have root in yourself? I mean, this is something you have before you meet Jesus. Because the seed is the kingdom. It's the word. And I'm like, Lord, what is it? What? How do we make sure that we have root in ourselves? What does it mean to have root in yourself? And I want to stop for a minute and, and first of all, get you to understand that the word seed there is the word sperma. We get our word sperm from it. Now obviously this isn't a sexual lesson, it's a, but it, it's, he's talking about the sperm of heaven. And isn't it amazing that Paul said, I'm going to labor till what? Christ is formed in you. Words from the Lord become sperm of heaven. Now, how many of you know that there really is no such thing as an indoor plant? There's only plants that were created for another environment... And when you take them out of their natural environment, you have to create an artificial environment for them to live in. When we went, to, we've been to Hawaii a few times, and my wife, she's a, like, I don't know what she is, you know. Our house looks like a jungle. I like plastic plants. <laughs> they rock. That's like religion, isn't it? Um... It always looks green. There just isn't anything living. But we went to Hawaii, and the first time we went to Hawaii, my wife goes, "Look at that! Look at that tree!" And I go, "Yeah, it's a tree." She says, "No, that's the plant we have in our bathroom." And you know, it's like, you know, it's taking over the island. <laughs> And then we drive over, she goes, look at that, that, look at that, look at that bush. I'm like, she goes, that's the bush we have in our front room. And you know, we went all over Hawaii. What I learned is that those little plants we have in our house, when you put them in their natural environment, they're like, they become like trees. <laughs> what happened? We, we, they're indoor plants because they're created for another environment. And when you take them out of their natural environment, you have to create an artificial environment so that they can grow in that environment. Are you with me? How many of you know that the seeds from heaven, the sperm of heaven's coming from another world? In order for it to grow in you, you have to create an environment that becomes sperm of friendly. <laughs> Did you get that? Because what God releases in you will not grow in another kingdom. <laughs> so the question is, did you get that? God releases stuff in you. Like you're going to have this amazing year. And all this life is going to be coming to you. The ability to have immaculate conception in your life. You're going to give birth to things that you didn't father. God did. But how do we make sure that you have a womb that will hold the seed and not just leave here and have it die? And it, <laughs> Did you get all that? I have this revelation. See, I used to think that teaching and instruction 
were the same thing. And one day, this is about, I don't know, six months ago or so, I turned the TV on, I was traveling, I turned the TV on, I'm actually looking for a sports channel, and there was a guy preaching. I don't usually like TV preachers, to be completely frank. But when I turned the TV on, he was preaching, and he said this. This is the, this is the opening line. I don't even think this, the picture had come on yet. He said, instruction means structures inside. Instruction means structures, in structures. In instruction. And it was like the Holy Spirit opened up this revelation to me, and I began to do some research, and I realized something that there is actually a difference between teaching and instruction. I'm going to maybe get ahead of myself, but let me just give you a couple of... Uh, the word instruction, I looked it up, the Hebrew word for instruction means... Hang on, I'll find it. Means something... Very powerful. <laughs> oh, here it, is. it means discipline, chastening, correcting, chastising, reproof, warning, and punishment. I don't know if you got all that. The word instruction means to learn by discipline, chastening, um, warnings, chastisement, punishment, and reproof. The word teaching, the word teaching means to learn, to be persuaded, to be directed, um, to be taught, to learn rules, or to learn customs. Here's my point. Jesus said that there was a man, there was a man who received the word with joy, but he had no firm root in himself. And so the seed died. Did you ever notice that in 2 Corinthians 5, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, it says, uh, in fact, I'll just read it to you. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but they are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. Did you get this? The weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but they are divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. And we're destroying, listen to this, speculations, lofty things, and thoughts raised up against the knowledge of God. Okay, Paul says that there are, there are fortresses inside of people and that the word of God, I'm sorry, the, he says the weapons of God can destroy their mighty weapons even though they're not like, you know, they're, they're not like atom bombs. They are mighty for the pulling down of fortresses. And then he begins to describe the fortresses. What are the fortresses inside of people? Thoughts, speculations, and lofty things. Follow me for just a minute. Thoughts, speculations, and lofty things, thoughts in this world are invisible. Like, I can't tell if you're thinking. I can't see them. I can't see your thoughts. But in the, but in the spirit realm, thoughts can actually become fortifications in which speculations and lofty things can live. Well, are you getting this at all? In other words, fortification, there, the, in the spirit realm, there are, Paul says, the, the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty for the pulling down of fortresses. And then he describes the fortresses as thoughts, speculations, and lofty things. In other words, Paul says that there are oftentimes fortresses, and where are the fortresses at? In our minds. And he says they need to be torn down because... They're raised up against the knowledge of God. And what are they? They're thoughts, speculations, and lofty things. And in the natural world, we can't see them, but they are very tangible in the spirit realm. Are you with me? And they, they can, they, thoughts, uh, speculations, and lofty things can actually house demonic powers. And when you, when somebody begins to, how do you tell if you have a thought, speculation, or lofty thing that's a fortress? Because when somebody begins to talk to you about it, you begin to defend it. What's happened? You got something fortified in your life that needs to be torn down. Okay, we're going to talk about that some other time. 
But here's the point. I want to I propose to you that there are fortresses of evil that need to be torn down in some of our lives. But there are fortresses that are actually greenhouses to the sperma of God that need to be built in our lives so that when we hear teaching, there are infrastructures that will protect the kingdom seed that is coming from another world that needs an environment that it can actually live in. Are you with me? How do you make sure that you're not going to be somebody that hears the word, gets all excited, but then falls away? You have to build structures inside of you. You have to build infrastructure so that when the sperm of God comes, when, the, when, when Christ in the fetus form comes, you have a place, a manger inside that protects it from the elements so that it can grow in you until Christ is fully formed in you. Did you get that much? Are you guys, am I losing you? Because you look like you're... How do you build this structure that will hold the sperm of God? Okay, here we go. Through instruction. There is a difference between teaching and instruction. Instruction builds structures that protect the seed of God. How do I get the structures that protect the seed of God? Listen to this. Here we go. How do I get the structures that, that actually protect the seed of God? I, let me read you, Proverbs 4.1. Hear, O sons, the instruction of a father. Give attention that you may gain understanding. Listen one more time. Hear, O sons, the instruction of a father, and give attention that you may gain understanding. How do you gain understanding? By listening to instruction. Listen to this. Proverbs 5.12. You say, how, I, how have I hated instruction? It's a question. You say, how have I hated instruction? My heart, start over, I messed it up. You say, how I, how I have hated instruction, my heart spurned reproof. I want you to notice, and there's just tons of these scriptures, but I want you to notice that instruction comes from reproof. Instruction comes from yielding to reproof. Here in Proverbs, Solomon says, how I've hated instruction, my heart spurned reproof. How come I didn't build structures inside of me? Because when somebody chastised, when someone corrected me, I hated it. See, you're called, Jesus never made Christians. He made disciples. The word disciple comes from the word discipline. I don't know if you're getting any of this. There's a reason why you're hearing this the first day. This isn't like my favorite message or anything. I'm, I'm hearing this. See, it says that how I've hated instruction, my heart's burn reproof. And then Proverbs 4, 1 says, Oh, hear, and, hear, O sons, the instruction of your father, and give attention that you may gain understanding. Uh, Daniel 9, 22 says, He gave me instruction, and he talked with me, and he said, Oh, Daniel, I've come to give you insight with understanding. Follow me for a minute. Instruction leads to understanding. Did you notice that? He said, I spurn reproof. I'm sorry, I, um, I messed that up. He says, I hated instruction because I spurned reproof. How did, he, how did he know he hated instruction? Because he spurned reproof. Here, Proverbs 4.1 says, If you listen to your father's instruction, then you'll gain understanding. What's the point? I started realizing something. That in order to get information, what's information? In formations. In formation. Why is it in formation? Because what's being formed in you is coming through words. Remember, the sower went out and sowed seed. What was the seed? The word of God. What is the word for the word word there? <laughs> it's the word sperm. How, what's happening when you're getting taught? You're getting in formation. 
But in order for the formations that are inside of you to live, you need a structure. How do you get the structure so that the formations that you're getting can stay alive? You get the structure through instruction. What is the difference between instruction and teaching? Instruction comes from discipline, reproof, chastising. And teaching comes, and, and, and information comes from teaching, the impartation of knowledge. Are you with me? One of them gets the manger, builds the manger. And the other one releases the baby to be born. If you have a baby with no manger, you're going to be like the guy who received the word, but then you're so joyful and you're going to wonder why six months later, nine months later, nothing's happening in your life. Are you with me? I begin to realize something. Let's use school as an example. Life, life is the right example, but let's just use school. The fact that you have to be here at a certain time, that you have to have a certain amount of work done, that you have to read certain books, that there are things that you can and can't do. That, how many of you know that God did not childproof the garden? There was things in the, there was one thing in the garden they couldn't touch. Why? Why did God, why didn't God childproof the garden? Because he needed something that they couldn't do. See, part of your, part of the way that you grow is that, is that you come to a place where there's, that, where there are requirements that you have to meet. And what those requirements cause is you to either humble your heart, submit to that instruction, or rise up and spurn the reproof. Are you with me? The fact that you have to be on time. When somebody goes, you're late, you have a choice to make. You can say, yeah, can, you know, you can basically say whatever you want, and then, you know, you can, some of you are passively aggressive in your nature. You're like, yeah, I'm sorry. But really inside, you're like, I'll do whatever I want to do. I'll come when I want to come. I'll read the book when I want to read it. See, the struggle with that is that I begin to realize that the structure that the school is in is as important as what's happening in the pulpit. Because the structure is what allows you to get instruction, which builds, a, which builds a, a positive fortress, we'll call it a palace, which builds a palace that the king can live in. Are you with me? Your ability to yield when you are asked to do something or asked to do some, or, or to stop doing something you're doing or whatever, your ability to be influenced by other people and to be disciplined or to be uh, challenged or you know what I'm trying to say. Basically, that is what creates the structure that the sperm needs to live in you. Sometimes from the pulpit, you are being instructed. Sometimes you're being taught. Sometimes you're being equipped and sometimes and sometimes you're being trained. Some of you are being instructed at the same time that other people are being taught. Some people are being taught at the same time other people are being equipped. Some people are being equipped at the same time that other people are being trained. And it can be all from the same pulpit at the same time. Are you with me? Some of the very most important times in this school will be times when you don't agree. Jesus talks to a lady and she says, you know, please, cast, uh, please heal my daughter. He said, I don't give bread to dogs. He called her a dog. The God of love created everything. Called the woman a dog. She goes, even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. What'd she do? She got low. She could have got mad and her daughter would still be demonized. But instead she got low. What did he do? He gave her an opportunity to be instructed. 
so that she could be taught. Are you with me? What did he do to the Pharisees? Same thing. You whitewash walls full of dead men's tombs. What was he looking for them to do? Not sperm reproof. Because if they could receive his instruction, they were ready for his teaching. I don't know if you're getting this. The Lord will intentionally put things in your life not just in your school. This isn't just about school. But he will put things in your life intentionally to offend you. No, I mean he did it on purpose. He set it all up to see if you're ready to hold the seeds from heaven. He'll set it all up. I remember the very first year of school, we had 37 students. And we had to tear down, uh, we were in a room that we had to tear down every night. We had to tear down all these chairs and, and set up tables for the, um, I forget what was in there after us, but set up the room for, and so um, we get every, every day or three days a week or however many days it was. Anyway, the first, the first day, I said, when we were all done, I said, okay, we need to tear down the uh, chairs and we need to assemble them this way and three people walked out of the room and, and left. And I caught him in the hallway and I said, um, what are you doing? I said, well, we're going home. I said, do you, do you have a job you have to be at? And they said, no. I said, why aren't you, why aren't you helping tear down the chairs? And, and one of them said, one, two of them said, oh, I'm sorry, I guess I didn't hear you, and went back in and tore down the chairs. And one lady said, I didn't pay, I forget how much it was, like $2,500. I didn't pay $2,500 to be your janitor. I said, I'll have your money back for you in the morning. You're, gone, you're out of school. Because if you can't do, if you, how many of you know, if you can't do, if you won't do what you can do, how are you ever going to do what you can't do? If you won't do what you can do, you know, Jesus didn't, he didn't multiply, he didn't make wine from nothing. He made it from water. He didn't multiply nobody's lunch. He multiplied someone's lunch. If you can't, if you won't do what you can't, what you can do, how are you ever going to do what you can't do? If you won't do what's possible, how are you ever going to do the impossible? If you, you know, if you go in the bathroom and it's a mess and you don't clean it up, if you won't do what you can do, how are you ever going to do what you can't do? You see, Jesus always takes what you have and multiplies. He doesn't take nothing. Are you with me? If, if, you, if you can't listen to instruction, how are you going to gain understanding? And do you understand what, do you know what understanding means? It means under standing. What's under your standing? Listen to this. It says, Instruction, listen, oh, hear, O sons, the instruction of a father. Give attention that you may gain, what? Understanding. He gave me, Daniel 9, 22. He gave me instruction and he talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I've come to give you insight with understanding. What did he do? He instructed me. And what did I get? Understanding. When I, when I yield to instruction, instruction. How, what is instruction? It comes from discipline, reproof, chastening. In other words, it's the, no, you can't do that. When I yield to instruction, what do I get? Understanding. I get a foundation built under me. Are you with me? I start to, I get to, I get the rock. I starting to stand on the rock. I starting to get a foundation. How did I get a foundation to live on? I received instruction. I got understanding. Listen to the next part of it. Proverbs 14, 6. A scoffer seeks wisdom and finds none, but knowledge is easy to the one who has understanding. I'm trying to learn. All I want is knowledge. Okay, well, if you get instruction, then you'll gain understanding. And if you get understanding, knowledge comes easy. Is this too complicated? 
I want to, I want to get taught. Well, that comes from information. But you're not ready for information until you can take instruction. And once you get instruction, you'll have a foundation that we can put information on. Information. We can give you informations. Is, <laughs> informations. Whew, that was bad. We can give you information and it will stay in you. And it will grow in you. It will become formations. And Christ will be formed in you. But first you need to get instruction so you can have a foundation. Did you get all that? Let me just unmute myself there. That was a quick ending. <laughs> wow. You know, this is a very crucial teaching for you to understand what this year is going to do and build in your life. So I'm just going to prophesy and speak the following over you. So you can just raise your hands as a sign to receive from God. So everybody just raise your hands quickly where you are at. I'm just going to decree over you a couple of things. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for CSM 2021. And I decree over your life that this year, God is going to build structures into your life, that he is going to build a foundation in your life that is going to be strong. And you are going to know that this foundation is there because there's going to be a shifting that's going to take place in your understanding. And you're going to open up the word this year and knowledge and a revelation and understanding is going to come in ways that you've never experienced before because you're allowing God to build structures in your life. And I just release right now a freedom over you to allow the Holy Spirit to come and to build these things internally inside of you and that you're going to feel the strength of the Spirit come over you every time you listen to a teaching, you listen to the instruction and every time you step out in faith and you do the things that are required of you and, and as you go out and the Holy Spirit speaks to you and you obey His voice in the, in the things that you do every day, those structures and the foundation is going to go deeper and deeper and deeper and this is the year you're going to going to be able to say i am truly standing on a rock right now i am not being swayed anymore going the left to the left or to the right but i finally found a foundation that god has built inside of me and from this foundation i can now go and gain knowledge and gain understanding in the name of jesus i just release that over you right now and father i ask that you will release your angels over every person right now Lord, I ask for your angels of wisdom, your angels that will carry wisdom, your angels that bring revelation and understanding, right now will go out to every room where we are situated right over Africa, Father God. I ask that you'll release your angels over each one of us, Lord, that that assignment that they are carrying for each student for this year, Lord, will be released in our lives, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you for what you have in store for us this year. We are so excited, Father, for what you have planned for us. This is going to be a transformational year for us, Lord. And as we come to you, Lord, saying, Lord, here we are. Lord, whatever you want, we are so hungry for you. We are so thirsty, Lord, to really stand tall in whom you have created us to be, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to grow and develop and to be stretched, Lord, and to step out in faith in ways that you have, we have never done before. Lord, and I ask this week that you'll send to each one of us somebody whom we can pray for, Lord, somebody that you have put on your heart for us to pray for lord i ask for divine meetings this week lord that you'll bring over our path people who need prayer who need the word of the lord this week we ask for that in the name of jesus amen amen wow <laughs> that was good i love it when god starts to move so some of you might get some angelic encounters <laughs> You might get some visit, not might, you will get some visitation. So, so that's what's going to be happening. What we're going to do now, we are actually, at, uh, our time is ended, but 
we just would love to get into small groups now just to pray for for each other um if your data is running out um because we actually just said we're going to finish at nine o'clock uh we won't be offended if you have to leave now but we're just going to break up into little groups for 10 minutes 15 minutes and then after that you, you we will leave the call that will be the end of our zoom session um because we just want to connect with you and uh, um, each group will have a group leader so when uh when i set up the groups and you um disperse into your little groups um, somebody will speak up immediately and say that they're the group leader and then you know <laughs> that's the group leader because we haven't had time to introduce to you our whole team yet um, and now i'm quickly going to set up the groups and while i do that um, first craig and then um, uh, um, johnny is going to just release some words of healing so if you uh, craig maybe you can go first and uh, just whatever you have on your heart for healing. Okay, I, um, I, I picked up that there might be people on the call that have anxiety. Um, uh, is there anyone that has any anxiety at the moment? Okay, I can't, I can't really see. Anyway, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pray for, pray. for that first, yes. That was me today. Um, I'm basically finished with my thesis. And I just suddenly had this overwhelming, like fear grip my heart, which is so unlike me. Um, I'm usually very confident, but it was, I had such an attack and I had my husband pray for me and yeah, it was weird. It was, actually, I haven't ever experienced that, but it was, it was anxiety and it was, um, it was a fear of not being good enough. Okay. The fear of not well, being enough. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to share for everyone as well. So because God gives a word of knowledge for it, and and obviously it was right in the sense that you have it, we know now God wants to take this away from you. So that's just I'm just sharing that for everyone else. Anyway, Lord, we just thank you for Shirley right now. We thank you right now for your love, your peace, and your joy that you have for her. And I just take authority of all anxiety i just bind that right now i bind all fear of failure i bind all fear of not being good enough i just take authority over that right now we cancel it in the name of jesus and we just declare right now full complete freedom lord i thank you for this thesis that when it's handed in that it would be received with favor that where where it goes to its destination lord she is going to have such a good report from it so lord we just thank you for your peace your joy and your glory just to shine upon shirley and just to bless her abundantly in the name of jesus amen 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 um i've actually set up the groups already so can i ask marika marika has this prophetic word for somebody marika will you type it out in the chat room and johnny will you also just type out a prayer that you have in your heart i would rather us go break up in groups now so we don't take up too much data if that is okay sure. with you. so check the chat you might see there that there's a message for you personally okay so next week we meet again you are allowed to invite friends uh, we're going to be using the same link um, we start at seven o'clock and so looking forward to meet you guys again so i'm going to open up the small groups